the problem for patients is that um, the degree of tenderness that patients with psoriatic arthritis feel as a group is not quite as high as patients with rheumatoid arthritis. And so the patients don't recognize that they actually are suffering from arthritis. They relate the discomfort to something else and they do not seek medical attention. And so that's why it's so important to teach the public as well as the uh, healthcare professionals on, on this condition and its consequences. The later they come, the worse they do, both in terms of um, a progression of joint damage and quality of life and function, you know, the effect on the patient. past, psoriatic arthritis was thought to be a mild disease, but over the past four decades, it's become clear that that is not the case. Patients with psoriatic arthritis can have a very severe disease. In fact, a certain proportion of the patients develop a very destructive form of arthritis called arthritis mutilans, and that's a very rapidly progressive destructive form of arthritis which really causes havoc with people's lives. It reduces quality of life, it reduces function. Most people have to quit work and uh, very difficult for women to look after children. So the severity is pretty high. A large proportion of patients have uh, a very low functional capacity. Productivity is also reduced. Even those that are able to work do not work to the same productivity that they should and they recognize it. Um, Health-related quality of life is poor, and so it, it really does have a lot of effect on patients' lives. The thing is, psoriatic arthritis affects uh, people in their third and fourth decade. I wouldn't call that old. Of course, old age moves with your own age, right? The concept of inflammatory arthritis is really what we need to make people aware of and how it does differ from the arthritis of, quote, old age, which is, we refer to as osteoarthritis, which is partly mechanical, partly inflammatory, but the, the main culprit is not as much the inflammation as the, the cartilage issue. So inflammatory arthritis is an area that needs to be really understood well by healthcare professionals. There are a number of um, groups around the world that are very interested in identifying the risk factors for a developing psoriatic arthritis. We have some answers, but we do not have all the answers. The one thing we know about psoriatic arthritis is one of the risk factors is psoriasis, unlike other forms of arthritis where there's no substrate. Almost 90% of patients with psoriatic arthritis develop the psoriasis first. Now there is a small proportion who don't, who have the, arthri the arthritis first. The second thing we know in terms of outcome, some people think that the severity of the psoriasis, and some even think that the sites of psoriasis may be risk factors. So for example, um, the degree of psoriasis around the body, presence of psoriasis in the scalp, in the glute intergluteal area, nail lesions for sure have been identified as a risk factor. There are a number of studies, including one from our own center, that demonstrate that trauma is a risk factor for developing psoriatic arthritis, and um, particularly heavy lifting. Um, infection may be another thing that uh, can be a predictor of developing psoriatic arthritis among patients with psoriasis. But again, these are contributors and whether they, they are um, individual risk factors or whether they somehow are related to the other risk factors, we don't know yet. We know that the degree of joint inflammation at the beginning may be a predictor for progression of joint damage. And we know that um, the severity of joint damage and the presence of erosive disease is a predictor for mortality. There are certain genetic factors, like an HLA B27 occurs more commonly in psoriatic arthritis patients than psoriasis without arthritis, and actually is associated with an earlier onset of psoriatic arthritis in patients with psoriasis. 
whereas HLA-CW6, which is a risk factor for developing psoriasis, actually is associated with later onset of psoriatic arthritis. And so these are the areas that people are working on now. And no, no psoriasis on the elbows? Uh, no, I don't think so. Do you want to check? Sure. So both psoriasis and psoriatic arthritis, which we often lump together as psoriatic disease, are associated with a number of comorbidities. First and foremost is probably cardiovascular disease, and that's one of the major causes of death. Um, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, obesity, diabetes, all features of the metabolic syndrome are also increased in psoriatic arthritis compared to the general population. Um, gout or, and hyperuricemia, high level of uric acid, is increased in psoriasis and psoriatic arthritis. But in the last decade, knowledge of comorbidities has become uh, widespread now, and I hope that physicians are all aware of this uh, complication. So I think it is important for both the medical community and for people with psoriasis to understand that they need to get screened for the presence of inflammatory arthritis. The earlier patient with psoriatic arthritis sees a rheumatologist and gets treatment, the better they do. Hi, my name is Kelvin and I work on the team that creates the content that you've just seen, Medscape TV. If you like the content and want to see more, click on the button to the right and it'll take you to the full series.